how can you provoke a glory that comes from there's glory from God there's a glory that comes from God now and uh, we are talking about what to do in order to get such a glory and you know that if we are talking about this kind of glory let's go to Philippians chapter 2 5 to 11 the man that we are celebrating today the, the, the son of God that we are celebrating today Jesus our Lord I want to show you the kind of glory he has I'm yet to see a man that does not know him manifesting such kind of glory let's be on our feet as we read these words together I'll take verse, 11, uh, verse 5 you take verse 6 I'll take verse 7 you take verse 8 I'll take 9 you take 10 then we we'll take 11 together Philippians 2 5 to 11 let's honor God as we rise Sister, did the woman is already sleeping. Did she go for bachelor's if I be Jesus's if yesterday? Or Jesus Karu? Shan she Karu la noni? Okay, tilom. Hallelujah. Now I read verse five. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, which means share the same mind with Christ Jesus. Now you read verse six. Mm. I read verse 7 but made himself of no reputation no reputation and took upon him the form of his servant and was made in the likeness of men now you read verse 8 shows verse 8 let's go and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross look at verse 9 I love verse 9 very well I'll read verse 9. Show us verse 9. Wherefore God also exalted, sorry, God also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every other name. Look at the glory from verse 9 and 10. Now show me verse 10. Let's go. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Now look at where his own glory is. Now, his glory is what? Number one, in heaven. Whatever his name is mentioned, only he has entitlement, he has authority in heaven. So when they say Jesus, they submit. To submit does not necessarily mean to kneel down. It means to agree, to pay attention, to show respect. Then number two, the Bible says when they mention his name on earth, his name commands respect on earth. When you say in the name of Jesus, the earth will stand still. Then the Bible says, even under the earth. Look at, on, even under the earth. So where God dwells, where man dwells, and where the devil himself dwells, Jesus has authority. Please sit down. Now, I am yet to see anyone. I'm yet to see anyone. I'm yet to see anyone manifest such kind of glory. You know, we have, today we have area champions. Hallelujah. People that in their area, they are making wave. When you mention their name in that area, people shake. You know, there are people like that. Hey, Ladugo, me. Ah, Tomati Darukwe, Ladugo, bye. Ubu Yama, me. Eh, Lagbajani. There are people like that. I remember in our days at Ibadan Boys High School, in my secondary school days, that was when Ibadan Boys High School was very radical. I don't know now. You know, we used to have one young man. We call him Robi. He was one of his, he happens to be one of the sons of uh, the late uh, uh, Babadi Dibu. Now, anytime Ibadan Boys High School was going to fight, he would lead the team. So this particular day, I didn't know what intoxicated him. He told them, he said he will go into comprehensive college and he will show them that he is the most powerful. He entered the college, comprehensive college, you know, full of charms. Some people fled, but some people mounted courage to challenge him. They challenged this guy and beat him up. Now, he was a champion at Ibadan Boys High School. But not a champion where at comprehensive college. Am I communicating? So area champion. Now, some people have what we call state kind of glory. In the state where they are, they are known. In the state where they are, they are what? They are known. People respect them. Some have national glory, some intercontinental. But if you look at that of Jesus, look at the kind of Jesus, his glory. If you mention his name, heaven will shake. If you mention his name, the arts will show respect. If the devil is the one behind a man's case, if you say, Jesus, the devil will flee. Now, that is glory. 
that's the kind of glory you should go for. Am I communicating? Don't just settle down for area glory because uh, uh, they know you in your area. Your father's house, you are the champion. You are like Jabez. Don't settle for that kind of glory. Don't go for just an, an, a state glory, a national glory. Begin to dream of the kind of glory that Jesus has. Now, we know of our fathers in faith who have gotten to that point. That when you mention their names, doors will open. I remember uh, a member of uh, uh, Winner's Chapel was coming from uh, a program. Arm robbers stopped them on the road. And the arm robber, as they were searching everybody, they, ask, they were asking them questions. What church do you attend? If you say you are a member of Mountain of Fire, they will say go like this. If you say you are a member of uh, 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 Winner's Chapel, they will say go like this. If you say you are a member of, you know, they know pastors that are radical. And they let their members go. You know what they told them? They said, we don't want problem of your pastor. Because if you go to church now and share that they will rob you, they will be pouring the anointing oil and cursing us. Now, there are glories like that. So this morning, I want to show you, what did Jesus do that you must never forget? That made him to receive such kind of glory that everywhere he entered, and anywhere his name is mentioned, he's being respectful. Now, let's look at it quickly. Now, look at that verse 7 of Philippians 2. That verse 7 of Philippians chapter 2 reveals something to us. Philippians 2, 7 reveals something. Now, while they are bringing it on screen, I'm still showing you the kind of glory that Jesus has. Can you imagine? Nobody has ever walked on water. He walked on water. What law did he break? The law of gravity. You can't stay on water if you have weight and not sink. He walked on water. Now look at, he's the only person that died and resurrected after being buried for three days. Look at such kind of power. What did he do? Look at this. But made himself, look at, the Bible says, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him, him the form of a servant. Now look up. Before he came to take upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men, he happens to be the son of God in heaven. He was dwelling in glory up there in heaven. He knew Ogolo Lono. Sapu here. Dwelling in glory up there in heaven. And there was this call. God was saying, Who shall, who shall I send? Who shall go for us? Tanuma law, Latile, Tua Wene, Okuro, Lowo Kunku. Who will deliver a human race from the hands of the devil? You know, the man entered into the bondage of the devil by the mistake, the sin of Adam. When man ate that fruit, man sold himself to the devil so we needed another man that will come and deliver us so Jesus our Lord agreed Lord I will do your will Lord I will do your will Lord I will do your will he left everything in heaven to come down to the earth in order to fulfill God's purpose write this down obedience to God's instruction is gateway I come again, obedience to God's instruction is the gateway to the realm of undeniable glory. Obedience to God's instruction is the gateway to the realm of undeniable glory. You know there are some glory, you say you have glory, they didn't say it. You must be able to follow the instructions. So obedience is the gateway. Now if Jesus our Lord had not decided to walk in obedience, there won't be this kind of glory that will make the entire world to celebrate him. Do you know that all over the world, Christmas is Christmas. I was sending my wife and children this morning. We woke up very early, you know, around 6 a.m. And we're saying, thank God, today is Christmas Day. And I said, as we are saying, today is Christmas Day. In Canada, they are still on the 24th. The Canadians are still, are still there in the night, planning to go to bed as at that time, because we have nine hours different, difference. Planning to go to bed. And they'll be saying, ah, we are going to be in Christmas tomorrow, while we are in Christmas. But Christmas is Christmas everywhere. Our dates may not fall on the same. Time zones may be different. But you can't mention Christmas and somebody say, what is happening? Even when you go to Saudi Arabia and mention Christmas, they know. They may not observe it, but they know. Go to Al-Ghazi, Al Al what do you call it? They know. 
The obedience is the gateway. You cannot be walking in disobedience, hear me, and expect that God will give you glory. It doesn't work that way. Because I know of people in the place of prayer, obedience to God's instructions. Listen, because of his love for God, he decided to pick up the assignment that makes God's heart to be glad. And I will say again, obedience to God's instructions is the gateway to the realm of undeniable glory. That's why, if there's anything you should learn this Christmas season, learn that you will make up your mind to walk in obedience. Think of Kumbawa Tobama Ko. Kokwe wash wash it ton atima shinti alone fair. Yes, I know you want to live your own life. That's what flesh wants you to do. Flesh wants you to live your own life. I know, yes, the devil is telling you to do something else. But listen, there is a will of God for your life. May you not be deceived out of God's plan for your life in Jesus' name. You know, I've always told you in this church, anytime you are outside God's will, you are outside God's coverage. Every time you are outside God's will, you are outside God's protection. Because, listen, wherever his will does not take you, his hands cannot preserve you. Say I hear. Hallelujah. I told you I won't take your time. Let's go quickly. There are two things, or let's say three things, that your walk in obedience will demand from you. Let's look at it. Three things that your walk in obedience to God's instruction will demand. Enitobamari. Number one, it will require a whole lot of sacrifice. It will require a whole lot of sacrifice. A whole lot of sacrifice. There are several things you must be willing to lay down. Because obeying God requires that some things that you love will be dropped. It requires a lot of sacrifice. Now, look at when God wanted to use Joseph. He had to leave his father's comfort. They, they took off his coat of many colors. He had to leave the place where his father would be his father's pet to go and become what? A slave in Egypt in a strange land. When Joseph had the opportunity to run away, he didn't run. He would have run out of uh, Potiphar's house now when he became boss. He would have decided to go back to his father's house. But he stayed. He knew that it was the will of God for him. Today's generation don't want to follow the will of God. You will still see some children of God struggling. I am born again, but sir, you don't understand. Eh? Cigar, I don't know how to leave this cigar. Uh, so, pastor, I'm born again, but sir, I don't know what I can do about these beautiful girls. Oh, sir, I'm born again, but I don't know. I don't know if I if I decide to be serious. These uh, young boys that are that are flashing me with cash will stop bringing. You have to learn to sacrifice. If your work in obedience to God's instruction will be possible, the first thing you should understand that it will demand a lot of sacrifice from you. Say I hear now. You can do better than that. Make it louder. It's, sacrifice is a strong will to let go. Sacrifice is a strong will to let go anything that is standing on your way even if it's your comfort. Now, when you say sacrifice, it's a strong will to let go anything that is standing on your way, even if it is your comfort. Anything that I just want to do, I just want to, I just want to do your will, oh God. So, if there's anything standing on the way, you know what sacrifice is all about? Sacrifice is all about you saying, man, let's go. Man, let's go. I was preaching to a young man. He said, Pastor, I shall make bad rack. You alone cook by Oti Law, be monitor long back by Bullof FC. Alone kick by Oti Law way, you know. What about the match? She, when they in front of Rain Lemon, you die. Kiloma, if you jerk walk with you, if you alone or not. Abby, you have to prove your love for him. Now, that's what, what made somebody like me to grow to this point. When I gave my life to Jesus, I made up my mind, I want to prove to Jesus that I love him. 
So everything that he does not like, I lay them down. Why? Because I want to prove my love. Am I communicating? So what's the next, the, what's the first thing that uh, obedience will demand? It will demand for sacrifice. It will be sacrificial. Jesus our Lord, let go his glorious throne in heaven to come fulfill God's purpose. And one of the reasons several children of God are still walking in, in disobedience today is because they are not ready to sacrifice. That, I'm telling you, that's the reason why so many children of God are still walking in disobedience. Because they are not ready to sacrifice. Do you know what it took us, somebody like me, to get to this point spiritually? It's not easy to get to this point. But I had to, I had to make up my mind. I want to be a genuine servant of God. There are many servants of God. Though. There are fake servants of God. And they didn't start. Nobody that is fake today started as fake. They became fake because they could not meet up with the standard. Hello? You didn't hear me. Hello? They want the same result, but they couldn't meet up to standard. That's why there is fake. Make up your mind. It's sacrificial. We were coming to church this morning. Now, paraphrase it so that you can learn. My children were asking a question from me. And we, I decided, any times like that, I always tell them, anytime there's opportunity, I turn it to lecture. You know, we were just talking and talking and talking, and they, they were talking about their future, they were talking about their present. My son was demanding that, okay, uh, uh, please put lipstick on my lips. Ah. And uh, my, my daughter was saying, why will I put lipstick on my lips? I, are you my son? I, on your lips, are you my son? And he said, ah, am I not your son? Am I not your baby? And my daughter said, no. When I want to have my own baby, I, I will have my own baby. You are not my baby. And he said, before your baby has, will come, will I not, am I not your baby? Put lipstick on my, on, my, on my lips. And I smiled. I didn't say anything. They were still talking and I said, no. And Yola now said, okay, by the time I, I have my own child, I will use lipsticks, lipstick for him. I now said, now, look, let, let me now respond. So I said my response. I said, if you start to put a lipstick on your son at child age, listen, the one thing you don't understand is this. When you give a child a foundation, a child will build on it. I said, if you put lipstick on your son's lips, as he grows, he will put holes on his ears by himself. Because you lay the foundation of lipstick on a boy, he will put hole on his ears. It will get to a point, the boy will begin to say, no, this is my hair. So, no, I have to put some. Am I communicating? Then she said, wow, and that's true. I now said, look at us, the foundation we give you. Let me give you some examples. I told them. I said, let me give you an example. I said, why is it that even up till now, you don't know how to watch TV. They said it's true. I said because we didn't lay that foundation in our house. You always met us reading when you were coming up. We on TV once a while. And they said it's true. We don't even used to watch TV in our house. We didn't even, there's no time to watch. I said, okay, look at when we're coming up. When we were, look, I started mentioning the foundations that has now become a part of their life. And you know what they said? They said, daddy, we used to think that uh, using all these things, uh, they are sins. That's why you used to tell us not to do some things. That now we understand that if you give a child a wrong foundation, the child will build on it. Am I communicating? Discipline. It wasn't easy when we were building. No? It was not easy. But we we're, were using sa sacrifice. We're sacrificing. So you cannot walk in obedience if you don't what? If you don't, if you're not ready to sacrifice, hallelujah. And what do I call sacrifice again? Let's let's run it over. What did I call sacrifice again? Yes, a strong will to let go of anything that is standing on your way. I love that. I love that. So to walk in obedience like Jesus, you must be willing to sacrifice your comfort when it clashes with God's instruction. Write this one down. To walk in obedience like Jesus, you must be willing to sacrifice your comfort when it, when it clashes with God's instruction. Because at times, eh, God's instruction will clash with your comfort. Too. 
I had the case, my mentor shared it. One of the women in their church, she had planned her gratuity, her retirement, what she will do with her gratuity. And by the time she was to uh, retire from active service, she took time to fast and pray. Lord, what do I do now that I'm retiring? You know what God said? God said, when you collect your gratuity, go and give it to me in church. Ah! Hey, how many years? Nothing served me in government work in Nigeria. How many, how many years? 35 years. Hey, Lord, 35 years service me. He rate 35 years. And do you know that the woman summoned courage, gathered the money, went to the church, and dropped it. It wasn't easy. There are times that the will of God will clash with your comfort. I know it's at such times God will know if you are a sacrificial Christian. Today that woman owns a very big school. Let's see the second thing that obedience will require. Number two, it will require courage. So don't forget, Jesus had to sacrifice his throne to obey God. What's number two? It will require courage because at times, obeying God will set you in battle with wicked people. It will require courage because at times, obeying God will set you in battle with wicked people. Some people will fight you because you choose to obey God. Look now, look at the battles that Jesus fought for me and you to be saved. I'm, I'm watching the time. What is the time now? Okay. Now look at the battles Jesus for every battle to face. What come on available? And he said, and so go shema. So go shema. When he baba daddy jimo. But I only check it. But you okay. To the quick in it. Oh man, can't I? Oh, I'm alive. There is chair, there are chairs. Sit down. You know, there are some scriptures you don't need to read. Our fathers, like uh, uh, my, my late mother in law, he said, one, one man used to come and visit her. He said, Yeah, by you, will make a job. He will make a job. He will make a job. He job. Mama said, She will say, Ah, hey, nye. So if I ask you, the Job has boy, you don't need to read scripture to know that one. So back to where we are saying, in your bid to obey God, you will become enemies of some people. Some people will fight you, not because of anything, just because you have decided to obey God. Do you, 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 this beautiful girl, I say you should come and see me so that you can receive your promotion. You don't want to come. I will make this office unbearable for you. It's a fight. But you don't compromise. Jesus did not compromise. That's why we can celebrate him today. You want no more compromise. Ah, have they, they, some of them will come to you that do business. You will share to and share ye. We are coughing, containing D. I say, No, Jesus, meet it all. My Jesus is enough. And because you say Jesus is enough, they team up with the enemy to fight you so that you can look for their help. In your walk with obedience, you will become some people's enemies. I must tell you the truth. Some people will not like you. And listen, one of the reasons why a lot of Christians are yet to receive the blessing of God is because instead of them to stand, they are compromising. They want to become everybody's friend. You can't become everybody's friend if you are going to walk in obedience to God's instruction. See, I hear now. Now look at what Peter said. Peter shared his experience. Acts chapter 5, 28 and 29. Look at Peter's experience. Peter's experience. Acts chapter 5, 28 and 29. Ah, Jesus, he tried though. Now look at this. Saying, did we not straight, strictly, strictly command that, to command you that you should not teach in this name? They were telling Peter. And behold, 
you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intended to bring this man's blood upon us. But look at the response of Peter. Peter said, then Peter said, and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to be God rather than who? Rather than men. I know of several fake pastors that are fighting me because I choose not to join their gang. Because I will always stand in the truth and I always tell them, what do you want from the devil that God has not given me? I was telling one of them, okay, kill and obash. What did you what did you go to ask from the devil that God has not given me? He has blessed me with my home. I have wife, I have children. I'm blessed with cats. I live in my own house. I am not hungry, I'm not begging. So why are you compromising? They will fight you. But you must make up your mind that you will not compromise. I wrote here, the devil and his agents were against Jesus, yet he didn't compromise. Kaya Gadabas. Your obedience to God will make you an enemy to so many. But you must be courageous enough to hold on. Your obedience will make you an enemy to so many. But you must be courageous enough. I made one post on the internet about marriage. And one pastor responded to me instantly. That if you are lucky to have a good marriage. Are you trying to mock those that doesn't have? I wasn't. I only said praise God. 18 years marriage and still counting. God is faithful. And that was his own response. Did I abuse him? No. That was when my marriage was 18 years old. But you know that, that my, my obedience to God is like a need to him. Say I hear. And you know why so many of you cannot walk in obedience to God? You still want to be a friend of everyone. Look up. Let me touch that sister with the glasses. Don't sleep on Christmas Day. Ah, this is Christmas service, a special service. I know when you are frying chicken, you won't sleep. Let me be seeing your face. Now, do you know that one pastor wanted to teach me how to do yahoo yahoo? Yes. You know, there's a, the spiritual yahoo. They invited me. I will tell you how they do spiritual yahoo. They invited me to Aroma Kitchen at Iworo. Sat me down. They asked me, what do you want? Will you like chicken? Mm, I don't like meat. I'm not a meat person. Pastor, should we offer you drink? I said, I'm okay. What do we offer you? I said, nothing. So as they were talking with me, a woman walked in. I was just saying, ka, ko, ka, ko, ka, you know, her heels. And if you see her nails, very long. If you see her skin, you will know that she doesn't live in Nigeria. Very fresh skin. And she sat down. And my friend said, this pastor prince with me. He said, oh, pastor, how are you, pastor? Uh, I'm not on the now. I said, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm doing great. Doing great. Um, has your friend talked to you about what I'm about to talk with you? I said, Well, he has been trying, but I don't really understand. He said, You know that most of these people you call your fathers in the faith, we made them whom they are. And uh, we just want to pick interest in helping you to become who you dream to become. I said, Wow, that would be nice. That would be nice. He said, well, now this is what you're going to do. This is what you're going to do. You're going to go and put up a three days program in your church. We'll, we will do the publicity. We'll, we'll announce it on radio, on TV, and things like that. Then you know what you're going to do on the last day of the program? You prepare food for the people. Package it, package it very well. And uh, get a cameraman to record the service. And by the time you distribute the food, you tell them how to lift the food up. And you'll be saying they should be waving it. Waving it. 
And then, once you are able to do that, give us the video recording and you'll be money. I said, wow, that's simple. We do anniversaries. The only thing is that we have not been lifting up food. Ah, if that is gateway to making it. At least we do anniversary with this true food, but we don't tell them to lift it up for them to record. And then I said, please, I don't understand. That recording part, can you tell me the mystery behind it? He said, wow. Do you know Bishop so and so? I said, yes, ma'am. He said, we did it for him. Do you know, he mentioned name. He said, what we do is this. You see, when, while they're lifting up and waving, we we'll do an editing on the video that these are refugees in Nigeria. They are suffering. <laughs> they are suffering and uh, we need financial assistance to help them so that they won't die of starvation. Then we take the video abroad. There are missionary, missionary organizations looking for African ministers to sponsor. So let's just talk about the the sharing policy. Can we make it 70-30? I said, you know what, ma'am? Let me go think about it. Ah, and if it's the man, the other man, I said, let me go I said, go over. Ah. Ah, I said, I'm not worried. 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 Now look up. As she left, my friend said, Pastor, I don't want to mention the way he calls me. You know who I'm talking about. He called me and he said, Kini, I'm a young one. She'll not if you it's okay. She bow can go with you when he come up. She said, Jesus. She will every bit of Connie be by. That's in him. Every time Connie be by. You know what I did? I stood up. And I was going. I've got my mind made up, and I won't turn back until I see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up, and I won't turn back until I see my Jesus. Someday, goodbye world, goodbye world. Now, listen. I now remember that a senior minister invited me for a program. And in that program, I led prayer. He said, I should be, we should be praying. As we were praying, I had, I was there. I didn't think of it that they were using it for anything. The pastor now turned his back and faced the man recording us. He said, can you see that pastors are praying and interceding powerfully? over your program in the U.S. All these men of God that you see, they are servants of God, really interceding. They need encouragement. Me, I didn't know that time. It was a senior minister. So I'll be coming over. Don't worry. I'll be coming over uh, at the meeting to see what we can do. And by the time he finished, he told us, he said, men of God, don't worry. Um, I'm going for a program in the U.S. and about few of you will be giving visas. Hello, Lario. I can look at one day on the Fajibule. That's what we call Yahoo Gospel. Make up your mind. You cannot be everybody's friend. Everybody cannot like you. So don't try to make everybody to like you. That's why I say to walk in obedience requires a lot of courage. Are you getting it? It requires a lot of courage. I will do the will of God. Today, I and that pastor are no longer friends. He's doing what they say he should do. He's building. He's becoming. He's building. Building. If you go to where they are building now, you'll be sure. The kind of number of buildings. But I always tell them, by the time you are landing up, you are going, I will be at your funeral. So, to summarize, your obedience to God will make you an enemy to so many. 
but you must be courageous enough to hold on. Jesus, our Lord, was able to maintain obedience because he was courageous enough. Look at one time that the Bible says they were planning of stoning him to death. Do you remember that time in the scripture? They even took him to the cliff of the mountain. They wanted to push him down. He just slipped through them because it was not their time. Walk in obedience. I've shared my experience with you now. I went for visitation one day, many years ago. I don't go again now. And if I go now, I don't go alone. This our sister didn't come to church. So I went to visit her. Many years ago, was, our church was still at Okebol at that time. And I knocked the door. Coco, 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 coco. Coco, 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 coco. And she said, Tani, yeah. That time I was still Brother Prince. Will. Brother Prince will kneel. Ah. Emma Bonulisa. And I entered the house. She was lying down on the bed. It was one room, one room, uh, let's call it one room suit. And room, one room suit. And as I entered, she said I should sit down. She sat down. She was topless. She sat opposite, opposite me and was saying, ah. I said, I, we didn't see you in church. Ah, she said, eh, uh, eh, uh, All of a sudden, I just realized I wait. This lady is topless. And I said, sister, I said, sir. Hey, she was up. She said, ah, muti a tig bag me. Ah, ah. Ah, bag me, muti a wash up. But because I have made up, I made up. That's why you two make up your mind. If Jesus could do it, you can do it. Pastor, is it going to be easy? No. But is it possible? Yes. The reason why I say it's not going to be easy, that's why you need a lot of courage to be able to do it. In fact, at times, it will even look as if you are the one that is wrong. Because your friends that are compromising will be going far ahead. I always tell my children, you don't live your life by natural things of this earth. Don't use natural things to judge who is making it. And look out, look at it. See? Make up your mind. Be courageous enough to walk in obedience. I've made up my mind. Let's rise up on our feet. Let's sing together. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back. Someday, let's go. Today is Christmas Day. 